Michael, here's what baffles me. Why is it that all my philosopher friends think consciousness is mysterious and, and uh, baffling, and my neuroscientist friends think it's not? Right. Yes, the mystery of consciousness. Well, I, I don't think it's that baffling. Uh, I think one of the surprising things about it is that it is understandable. In fact, I would even say that the outlines of an explanation are already here. Uh, I think that uh, many neuroscientists actually are also, uh, they, they may not know it, but they're espousing a view of consciousness as mystery as well. One of, one of the most common approaches in neuroscience is that uh, the brain somehow produces this magical essence that arises from it. And neuroscientists are trying to figure out how do you hook neurons up in the right way such that they resonate and then like a heat, something <laughs> emerges out of it, right? So even in neuroscience, uh, perhaps with less philosophical reflection, there's still this kind of funny mystery uh, if you approach it from the wrong way. Uh, you know, how, how can you approach consciousness or awareness, let's say? I like the word awareness better because it's, it's, uh, it's a little less loaded, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. People mean so many different things by consciousness, but by awareness, I am aware of something. And, and maybe there's a little clear understanding of what that means. So how, what does that mean to be aware of something? And one possible approach to that is to look at the way that we use awareness, this construct of awareness. And uh, one use that is not often studied, uh, talked about, is uh, in, in a social context. We use awareness socially, and by that I mean I attribute awareness to you. Right. Right? And, so you um, can understand my motivations or predict what I may do with theory yes, of mind. Yes, so, so theory of mind. So in, in, in social psychology and in social neuroscience, there's a giant field, giant area of study of me figuring out what you're thinking, what you might do next, what your emotions are. But there's a part of it that's not often studied, and that is me attributing awareness to you, mm. right? the awareness part. In fact, it's very hard for me to figure out that you intend to do something like pick up a sandwich, unless I also understand that you're aware of the sandwich. Mm -hmm. So it's a very basic part of, of social perception that is often missed. I attribute awareness to you. Um, and uh, the way that works uh, is, is, so you're paying attention to something. Right now you're paying attention to me. I know that, because mm -hmm. the way your eyes are looking and your body language and the context, all these cues tell me that you're paying attention to me. And by attention, I mean something very specific. I mean that your brain is focusing its processing resources on me. So it's something internal and mechanistic. It's internal to your brain. But I can tell that because of these cues that I pick up. And based on those cues, then I build a kind of model of what's going on in you, right? And that model is you're aware of me. You have a kind of inner experience of me. And this would have been built through evolution and, yes. and, and has uh, fitness uh, um, yes. uh, benefits, yes. uh, group cohesion benefits, well, all sorts of yes. things that, that, that favor this and select for these exactly. qualities. Exactly. And I would say the main benefit is it allows me to predict your behavior. Yeah. So it's part of a prediction. So if I pick up a sandwich or I pick up a rock, you want to know the difference. Yes. And if, if you're, we're in a fight, I want to know whether you're aware of that nice handy rock, right. in which case you might pick it up and right. hit me with it. So uh, uh, I attribute awareness to you as a way of modeling or understanding your state of attention, right? And that's very interesting because it starts to suggest that what awareness is useful for is a kind of simple uh, way of keeping track of a much more complicated process of attention. So attention is very mechanistic, very complicated, going on in your mind, or in your brain, I should say. And I use this much simpler notion of awareness to try to model it and keep track of it, right? So awareness then is, in the social sense, 
is the uh, ca capability of discerning how the how the other is focusing their attention because yeah. I need to know that information yes. for my social interaction, yes. maybe for my physical yes. well-being. Yes. So when I think to myself, "You're aware," what I'm really doing is of drawing, as, in a sense, a cartoon sketch of your uh -huh. state of attention. Okay. Awareness as a model of attention. Right. Now that's, that's very interesting. Now, can you then apply that internally? Yes, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right, and that kind of leads to this hypothesis. First of all, maybe the same brain mechanisms that I use to attribute awareness to you are being used when I attribute it to myself, right? Maybe I think I am aware in the same way, in the same brain regions as I think you are aware. And second of all, maybe its utility is that it, it acts as a model or a way of monitoring and keeping track mm. of my state of attention, mm. right? So I can apply that to myself, I can apply that to you. Uh, one of the interesting things about this uh, social perception or my attributing awareness to you, it's not an intellectual game or an exercise, right? right? It's not that I cleverly figure it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a gut yeah, sure, certainty, sure. right? It's almost like you have something in you that's emanating out of you, yeah, yeah. Uh, much as when I attribute awareness to myself, it's also kind of a gut certainty. I have this thing in me. And of course, it comes with all these uh, kind of um, uh, you know, uh, the sense of something in me that can emanate out of the eyes and all these other mythological aspects that are attached <laughs> to consciousness. Uh, so, um, what, what do you call this theory? Yeah. This I, w I call the attention schema theory. Mm -hmm. so it's a very okay. simple theory. It says of awareness. Of awareness. It says that awareness, awareness is uh, a model or a schema, as it's sometimes called, that's constructed by the brain, and it describes something. And in, in a somewhat cartoonish or simplified way, mm -hmm. it describes something else. The thing it's describing is attention, this mechanistic process of selecting signals. So, so does it make sense to ask which came first, the social requirement to use awareness so I can understand the attention of the other for self-protection when that was selected for, or whether it came first internally and then I applied it externally? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. If I had to guess, I would say modeling oneself comes first. And the story that I would give would, would go something like this. Uh, attention evolved quite a long time ago. And we have some sense of that because if, if, if you look across clays and groups of animals, uh, you know, insects have something like attention. And, um, mammals and mm, birds and sure. so all these creatures diverged from each other about half a billion years ago and it's somewhere in that time span uh, sometimes called the Cambrian explosion I think it's about 550 million years ago when nervous systems became sophisticated enough to have this ability to select some signals over others so attention starts to emerge and as soon as that happens there must be some use to building an internal model of what attention is, so you can keep track of your own attention. Mm. And so I would guess that the rudiments of this thing that we now think of as awareness emerged very gradually, starting way back half a billion years ago. It's a very gradual progression. And at some point in that progression, uh, once we had a very effective and sophisticated way of, of modeling our own states, we could then use that same machinery and start modeling the states of, of other individuals. And, and Here's a problem I would have with that, because I think I see a little daylight between the way you define awareness and the way others may define consciousness. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's right. Okay. Um, um, because awareness, as you've constructed with attention, seems to work well, but yeah. are you capturing what others mean by consciousness in this in this uh, sense of, of, of qualia, as yeah. we say, the, the yeah. quality of the inner yeah. experience. Because you could have the reaction of awareness in a reflexive way yeah. rather than a, an appreciation for the inner moving. Aware, awareness can be such that it can direct attention almost in a robotic sense without the inner moving. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we, at the moment, we're studying mostly uh, the, re uh, the relationship between awareness and vision. That's what almost everyone says. Right, right. Uh, vision is so well understood, yeah, it's right. just a lot easier to study that. And in, in vision, 
oh, uh, attention is something that can operate at many different levels, right. including what we think of as uh, bottom-up attention. And by bottom-up, I mean a bright thing flashes or something jiggles and, and there's an automatic drawing of your attention. Right? But uh, one of the things you find is that even that uh, requires some control. It may be a very fast control, uh, but it, uh, this uh, bottom-up, this instantaneous seemingly instantaneous drawing of attention to something uh, requires some degree of control. And we think that good control requires some degree of awareness. So you can have these very strange cases that have been studied, you know, for the last maybe two decades. Uh, uh, these strange cases where you can actually pay attention to something and not be aware of it. Yeah, right, right. It's very right, interesting right, you right. can separate those two. Right. And uh, what we think is going on in the data is that in that case, you um, you may be attending to it, but you have very poor control over that attention because your brain essentially doesn't know you're paying attention to it because it lacks its model or description of attention. And, and that's so whether it's this uh, immediate kind of uh, something jiggles and snags your attention or whether it's a more you know internally generated attention on something. Doesn't that support a difference though between awareness and consciousness? Uh, between awareness and the attention. Yes. So one you're paying attention to it. Yes. Because you you have to react to it. Yes. But you're not, not aware, aware of, it. of it. That's right. It, it depends on how you're defining aware. Uh, and I'm, aware. I'm a little troubled by the relationship between awareness and consciousness. Are you capturing with your theory which sounds to work terrifically and mm -hmm. really fascinating? But I'm just not sure you're capturing everything in consciousness with your definition of awareness. Yeah, I think it does a good job, actually. Uh, although, you know, to, to pursue all those different connections mm -hmm. <laughs> takes a long time, and I eventually right. discovered it took a whole book. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I try to get at in this theory is that uh, we have a lot of intuitions about awareness, about what it is and what it's like. Uh, you might say a mythology about awareness. For example, a very common belief that it's something that's almost plasma or energy-like and it's sort of invisible and it is inside of you and it comes out of the eyes and touches things. And we sort of smile at that. It turns out almost all children think that visual awareness comes out of the eyes. Uh, and if you ask college students, something like two-thirds of them think this as well, which is shocking. Uh, why is that? Uh, this has been a puzzle, and I would argue it's because we have this internal model that informs us that that's how our attention works. And so we can't help those kinds of inner intuitions. It's almost like the intuition we have that white light is pure and, and scrubbed of all color. Right? We have that intuition because that's the information available to our brains. Our brains construct this somewhat false model. So these very... Uh, mystical kind of intuitions we have about awareness that it's a kind of energy like floaty thing that it can come out of the eyes that it's private that it's uh, uh, a non-physical inner experience uh, that uh, it has the subjective quality to it and an ineffable quality all these things uh, can be explained as uh, properties described by the model and accessing that information that's all we have to work on. That's what we report. So uh, this kind of approach does a fairly good job, actually. It's one of its strengths that it does a fairly good job of getting at these um, kind of, the, kind of the, the phenomenal aspects of, of, uh, of awareness.